threat to the police. Now, look, we need to stop this. Something needs to be said. Where, where is the outrage? How is a performance, as she said herself, that was meant to inspire people, to encourage people, to make people remember? How is that a threat to police? Well, I'll tell you why. It's because it was also uh, paying respects to the Black Panther Party. Oh, no. Oh, no, she didn't. Oh, America's good girl who married America's bad boy? What? Black Panther Party? It was beautiful. And Beyonce did, everybody say out there saying, uh, and there's these memes that have been traveling around Facebook. People like uh, Dr. Jared Ball, who has, I've interviewed him several times. He's a very intelligent man, but he's way off on this one. If in fact the meme, if he believes that, right? He says, is, you know, you see these memes and side by side. So on one side, you've got like some sisters from the Black Panther Party, like from the circa, like not the 60s or the 70s, right? Deep in the struggle, right? Surrounded uh, by oppositional forces and racism, ready to crush them. Okay, I get it. On the other side, there's like a snapshot of the ladies who were the backup dancers for Beyonce during the Super Bowl. And the caption reads like, uh, if this is a revolutionary, then what is this? That's a bit unfair. That's a bit unfair because Beyonce is an entertainer. People keep forgetting that the black Panther party was a grassroots revolutionary movement. Okay. They started from two different places and they're going to end at two different, different places. It's the truth. That is the absolute truth. Stop me when I'm wrong. So you got these black, these are black people running around on Facebook, running around the internet. See, I'm on the internet now. I'm taking over. Now I'm here and we need to get some things in order. Common sense will be maintained. Order will be maintained. And I'm going to reach out to Dr. Jared Ball and see if he wants to come on the show. And I want you to hear it live. Well, it won't be live unless he wants to get up early. If not, I'll podcast it. But I'll tell you either way, I'll be straight with you as we, as we make this journey together. So for all the folks out there running around with like the memes, if this is a revolutionary, then what is this? Beyonce is not a revolutionary. I'm not saying that she is. Who, who's making that argument? Uh, Beyonce, I'm sorry, herself would not say or self-describe as a revolutionary. All I'm saying is she took that moment, the Super Bowl, and we know how big that Super Bowl moment is. We remember. Uh, can you say Janet Jackson? Yeah, I haven't forgotten. Yes. And neither has America. Can you say Justin Timberlake? Who still gets a Gilligan of the War of the, of the lifetime for me? You want to get up close to Jan until it gets hot, then psh, he was out. Incog wannabe Negro. He was out. <laughs> he was Incog wannabe Negro. You couldn't see him. You know where Justin Timberlake was. So we know how big that moment is. You have, it is the big, if what they say is true, again, I've not looked at the metrics of the numbers, so I can't really tell you. But here's what's being reported over the years. They reported as, well, uh, this is the biggest moment in television every single year. Hundreds of millions. Hundreds of millions, if not billions of people around the globe watching this moment and she chose to go Black Panther with it. Now, she may not be a Black Panther. She not may, may not be revolutionary, but you got to give the sister her props for that. You got to give her her props for that because who else is doing it? Who else is doing it? You know, Spike Lee's running around here making movies talking about have women would just withhold sex that somehow we can stop the shooting. So he won't even deal with it directly. I thought it was beautiful. And the fact that even afterward, and even to this point, she is unwilling to step away, I think is great, is great as well. Uh, I will tell you that because of it, there is a huge fallout. You got people like uh, Giuliani, I'm sure others, I'm sure there's a lot of members. Uh, I'm only speculating because of recent history. I'm sure there's a lot of members of the um, w w w those who support police, uh, and it's their job to support police and represent police. They're upset. They're upset. I don't get it, but they're upset. They're upset because Giuliani told them to be upset, probably, because it doesn't really make any sense. It really doesn't. But again, that's a big moment. So where's Belafonte now? 
Where is hell? Where are these 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 skions, these icons that was criticizing them? Think about it. Think about it. If you want to interact with me this morning, send me a text. We got full capability. I can actually read your text. And if you're connecting via Facebook, and I'm sure many people are, then I can actually see whatever your face prowl profile uh, photograph is as well. You can even interact with the various people inside of my chat room, and it's all pretty simple. Download the Spreaker app, then uh, please feel free to do so. But of course, you don't have to do so. Have the Spreaker app if you are trying to uh, listen to the show, and uh, we might have a little hip up there, but uh, glad to be with you. And I'm breaking down everything that's going on, everything that's going on. So one person is staging a protest in about a week from what I'm reading. It's going to be a one person protest to start. But something tells me that many others are going to join on. And the plan is to protest outside of the NFL headquarters. And the reason why is because of Beyonce's Super Bowl halftime show. There's someone out there that's so upset. And I'm sure that other people are going to jump on point aboard as well that they are going to stage a one-man protest. And has there ever been a bigger waste of time, folks? Has there ever been a bigger waste of time? But it says something about it. You know, if that was Katy Perry and she was somehow making it more pop than political, it would have been all good. But we know how the game is played. Um, If you live in the city of Cincinnati, hey, well, good morning to you, Ed. And many others. Matter of fact, let me take some time and read some of your text messages before we go on and continue on with our topics. So many people are tuning in, and I want to make sure that if you take the time to send me a text message um, that I actually get to it. I see John's checking in. He says, let's get it. Good morning, John. Akeem writes, can black people prosper in longevity in Cincinnati is the question. Uh, Every writes, top of the morning to you. Uh, John writes again, uh, deja vu for Hillary. It certainly is. Kelly writes, good morning, Nathan. Good morning, Kelly. Uh, Shauna writes, sounds good, Nathan. Good morning. Good morning, Sean. I appreciate you. Uh, Tiffany said, I downloaded the Periscope app, but not find the broadcast. Hashtag help. I don't have it up, Tiffany. Uh, I'll let you know when I start broadcasting portions of the show. I want to make sure everything is right before, you know, I take steps. Um, see, uh, Kena writes, uh, right on, get up, get out. Uh, Deanna writes, uh, good morning, Nathan. Checking in on the Metro. Appreciate you, Deanna. Are you actually on the bus? And you got the and you got the maybe your phone on? Let me know. Uh William writes, what up, King of Talk? Uh David writes, uh, morning, Nate. Uh Terry writes, uh, good morning. Love your new flow. God bless you on your new journey. Thank you, Terry. I appreciate you. Uh very much. Uh what else? Uh da, 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 da. Mike Jones writes, Nathan Sierra is such a hypocrite. She's angry and it shows, using her son as a pawn. Well, that's a good jump off point. How prevalent do you think that is? That people get into relationships and they have children and then the children end up becoming a pawn in the relationship of the adults. And I want to reach out to you. Is anybody, does that sound familiar to you? Did you grow up in a household like that? And I think parents, I think number one is a parent. And I can only speak from my own feeling is that you never want to do anything that's going to injure your child. But sometimes you can get so caught up in your feelings, so caught up in what your issue is with this other person, you can sometimes forget. Sometimes you can forget. And I think it's the same thing with women. I think there's some women out there, and I'm thinking about Sierra. And this is a big issue. This is worthy of our time this morning. But I think as it relates to Sierra that there are a lot of women out there who are single mothers. And they spend all their time with their children. You know, they're invested in their children. They love their kids, as you understand any parent would be. And it gets to the point where they realize, damn, I'm always around a kid. I want to be around an adult. And so, and I've seen this, and it gets played out in the media all the time. So you start, you know, you start pulling back a little bit. You may, you may find yourself doing things you wouldn't normally do just because you're kind of thirsty for that adult attention. Am I wrong on that? Do I sound like I'm off base? So when I saw Sierra, and it seemed like that whole thing happened very quickly, and she's got her son with future dressed up in a jersey like he's another man's son, that's too far. And ladies, before you say, well, if you want it, then you better put a ring on it, because I agree with you. Everyone knows my stand on it. These men these days need to step their game up, period. We all know it. 
But still, you got to have some standards in the game as well. There's got to be some respect. So, ladies, let me flip it. And all these ladies on Facebook going at me right now. I'll read some of these content, some of these, uh, some of these comments in a minute. And again, I'm on the Spreaker Network. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Google Plus. I'm on Facebook. And all I ask you is that if you can hear me now, let me know how it sounds. Interact with me and push the show forward. Share it with your friends. Because if you're on Facebook and you got 100 people, you got 100 people, and you can look at it this way, in your audience. And via my Facebook page, I share my audience with whoever is on my page. And I'm asking you to do the same thing. So if you got 1,000 people, 2,000 people, 3,000 people, 400 people, you got six people on your page, just share it. And there might be some other folks here in the city of Cincinnati that get on to it. Like, I believe in what I'm doing because I believe in you. And I believe in you because so many people believe in me. So there's a real symbiotic relation here, relationship going on here, especially in the Internet age. Everything is about clicks, is about shares. And so that's what I'm asking you uh, to do for me uh, this morning. Someone writes, uh, Nathan, I need you to kill a dispute that I'm having with my sister. Who was from Cincinnati? Um, let's see here. Jerica, find me on Facebook. I see uh, James writes, um, did you see the video of the woman going crazy because the father took them to get her hair cut? No, I haven't seen that, James. Send it to me. I'll check it out. Haven't seen that. Good morning, Nathan. Um, Diara writes, getting my daily dose of IV straight bar E. Protests won't stop because Beyonce's concerts uh, are selling out. That was a great move. I mean, Beyonce basically turned the Super Bowl into an album release party. She turned the Super Bowl into an album release party to hundreds of millions of people. So it's just hating. It's just absolute hating. Again, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Google Plus. But primarily, I'm at NathanIvy.com and tell everybody about it. And that's where you can hear the show every day at 7 a.m. And I'll be discussing things that are going on, primarily in the city of Cincinnati. And speaking of which, I want to get to that. Some things that we must discuss that if you live in Cincinnati, if you live in Ohio in particular, these are things that you should keep your eyes on. Number one, I find it so interesting that there was so much money moving through MSD, right? And now we're finding out that an oversight board that was supposed to have put checks on improper spending basically was inept. They were sort of fading. They either were never set up the way they were supposed to operate as oversight for the spending, or they were quickly dismantled. And I'm just speculating here because I don't have any inside information, but they were quickly dismantled by infra, by folks who understood that they could move in a certain way if they didn't have an independent oversight board operating over them. Okay. I think that makes sense to anybody who's listening right now. And now you've got Cincinnati city councilman, Kevin Flynn, and I mean, to his credit, he's been talking about this for some time. He's making more noise about it. And it's looking like, it's looking like something serious may have gone on. How do you have so many hundreds of millions of dollars moving through MSD and there's really no independent checks and balances determining, right, and scrutinizing where the money is going. Who's getting the money? Is it, is, it, is it the good old boy network? That's what it looks like from the outside looking in. And a lot of this was going on under the direction of the former director, Tony Parrott. Again, that's what the story is from the outside looking in. But we don't know how deep this is. We don't know how deep this is. My question is of the current administration. How many folks who are currently in office, who currently have a job, who either work for the city or work for the county, knew that the independent oversight board wasn't operating properly? From what I'm reading, it's saying that it wasn't operated properly for at least the five, last five, six years. Big money. You're talking big money. Big money coming through the city. Uh, big money coming through the county. And if you can control the the, 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 spur, the purse strings, then, wow, that puts you in a really, really advantageous position. So what do you think? Do you think this was something that was just, oh, well, oh, we, we, for, oh, we forgot about that independent oversight board. Oh, man, thanks for reminding us. Or was it more like, you know what? Hmm, somebody made the decision that they could operate more freely in whatever that means. I'm not saying any names because I don't have them at this point. 
if they didn't have this independent oversight board looking over their shoulders. You know what I think. I don't believe in coincidences at all.